Hey, good morning, everyone. Let me know if everything is all right with the connection and let's get started coding. Buenos dias, Iva Ilta. Dobro oranku, slava Ukraini. Hello. Hello, my friends. So, I will assume that it's fine for now, but let me know in the comments. I mean, in the, in the chat. So today I decided I'd create a simple animation, but with the React 3 Fiber this time, kind of trying again to switch streams to React 3 Fiber, possibly. And good evening, good night, and good morning, and a good day. Hello, thank you. Thank you, guys. Let me know where you're from. Meanwhile, it's always, it's always nice to know, like, always inspiring to know. Yep, React Free Fiber today. Alrighty, so mm, I'm gonna, without further ado, I'm gonna switch the screen and let's get started. Thank you guys, thank you. So uh, today it's actually second time I'm, I'm recreating the animation from this website, Blue Yard, by the Unseen Studio. I'm gonna credit them in the description, all the URLs for the developers and the studio. And uh, but this one, a couple of guys asked me also how to create this kind of animation because it, it's it's so nice. I'm gonna put the link in the comment in the chat. I'm gonna put the link in the chat. <laughs> one one. This is a quite a weird translation, I should say, but sounds good. All right. So this is the website, this is the brain animation with kind of particles around and on the inside out. Not sure about the background particles, maybe we can fit them into one hour, but I'm definitely trying to recreate this brain animation with the React 3 Fiber today. Can you change room floor using React 3 Fiber? <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know, I would try the elevator. But what do you mean exactly by changing room floor? Uh, good morning. Good morning to Vietnam, Hungary, Bangladesh. Whoa, some quite geography. Okay, let's get started. So I'm going to call this one, well, brain. No, I'm not going to call this one brain. Because we're using React Free Fiber, I'm going to start uh, on my desktop and I'm going to do npm create white. Gonna start from literally empty things. So let's just check if I'm recording. <laughs> All right, I do. And I'm gonna call this project Brain. Brain it is. It's gonna be React, and it's gonna be just JavaScript because I'm not really into TypeScript yet. Kind of gets in the way of experimenting in the code. Okay, then mm, I go to the Brain folder. So npm install. I'm gonna install all the uh, all the three fiber modules as well. Oh, okay. Because yeah, thank you, thank you for confirming that the sound in the video is fine. Because uh, I was worried. Hello to Ukraine as well. Hello Ukrainian. All right. So we have Australia, we have Vietnam, we have India. We gotta have the other hemisphere as well, right? Well, if it's someone's good night, it's definitely somewhere in Americas, right? Well, you can support me on the Patreon. I'm good with that. Or you can just support any uh, like uh, big funds in the Ukraine helping the army. This is basically the same as supporting me. All right, uh, so let's fire up the code. Let's start coding in PM run. I think it's dev. All right, so we have an empty kind of uh, uh, React application. Kind of want to align the all the windows. Will this help? Yeah. All right, this hotkey worked finally. So I have this. I'm going to leave this one in here somewhere. So see the compilation errors. All right, all right, almost ready to go. 
Oh, several years ago. That's that's a long time. I guess that might have been the other language. Uh, all right. Let's first clean it up because it's not really anything about WebGL yet. Hello to Zagreb. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely updating the workshop. It's just it's just too many things happening uh, and not so much energy to do all those things. Okay. We gotta add uh, some basic CSS just to scale all the stuff outside of all hidden, so it didn't change much. Gonna go to the app.js. I don't really have app CSS now. I don't really need all of this. I don't really need all of this. All right, so now we have the simplest possible React application. Now we are ready to go. Okay, hello to Peru. So yeah, we indeed have all the globe uh, again. So happy to make this like, Earth planet puzzle of time zones happen. Thank you guys for like for basically not sleeping at this at this time. This is crazy. Three a.m. All right. So first, I'm gonna get the uh, let's. Let's grab something. Uh, I really, I really, really, really admire Copilot in here because, I mean, I don't usually remember which, uh, like, which module is that React Free Fiber or React Free Dry module, like Orbit Controls. I don't really remember whether it's in the additional modules or in the like basic modules. And Copilot does help a lot with that. All right, let's first create some boilerplate thing. The pilot helps with that as well. So in here, yeah, let it be box geometry and uh, whatever, pink. Little Viv, nice to see you guys. All right. Is it enough, really? I don't really need this. Something should happen. This seems to be enough, but I'm not sure why I'm not seeing anything yet. Okay, no errors at least. Uh, maybe it's because, because of this. Probably, yeah, I'm still not used to the, all, all those small things in the React, like, mm, like this will basically break everything for me. Well, it makes sense, of course, yeah, but yeah, I'm just not used to this. All right, so now we have the pink cube, not really so much of a cube yet. Let's add orbit controls on the dry repository. And it really, I really admire the efforts that the whole the community and the team and the Paul himself did about the mm, React Free Fiber because it, it is really a breeze to start basic boilerplate with React Free Fiber and we just get so many things uh, basically for free. This is the whole code I wrote, but I already have this cube and the resizing and I can rotate up like this. So it really, yeah, 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 you're right. I have to return. Or, yeah, I'll wrap them in the brackets. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. I'm just not uh, yet so much of a React guy, more like a 3JS guy, so I'm struggling with those small things. But anyway, let's, let's get into this stuff. So, uh, the animation that I'm trying to recreate today is actually this one with the brain one. So, uh, obviously, it includes, it's not 100% uh, generative uh, uh, art or the, you know, or the procedural animation, because it requires us to have this uh, brain shape, basically. And it is on the website, and maybe I'll, I'll just go ahead and grab it. Uh, how do I... All right. Move it to separate window. 
I just want to grab the data, I might use it a bit later on. Yeah, Koimandras are the gods. True. I think this is the scene JSON, and the scene that I'm interested in is the economics one. So, uh, can I just copy object? And then data.js. Yeah. Something like this. Now we have the data. I'm not going to use it yet, but I'm going to at least include this data. Because I'm kind of still uh, following the steps of the developer to show the approach. But in the end, I think I'm going to switch to generative geometry anyway, because I mean, this is a work that has been done by the studio and the guys, and I'm more of a, I'm trying to at least add up something unique to this. Okay, uh, so import data from, well, yeah, data. So do we have the data in there? Okay, so this is not the website to refresh. Um, yeah, so we have the data and I think it's going to be just preparing its economics. And then it's zero. And then it's paths. Yeah, right. So basically what they do, they, they prepared some curves of the brain to implement those curves. But this isn't, uh, of course, not everything that has been done in here. So I'm going to just do const equals these things. And let's leave this console log in place. So if you go into those, those are basically just arrays with some data in there. Just a lot of, a lot of points, like 165 uh, numbers, and every single array has a lot of those numbers. What you could notice, uh, like first about all of those arrays, that they are all uh, multiples of three. So they all could be divided by three. And by the way, you could always check if something is dividable by three by basically adding up all the numbers, all the digits in the number. So if the sum of the digits in the number is dividable by three, that means the number is also dividable by, by three. Actually, same works for the division by nine. Oh, so I'm so proud I learned that one in school. All right, all right. So far, so good. Right. So first of all, um, where do I start? Where do I start? I'm gonna create first of all one uh, like line or tube. Then I'm gonna create a lot of those tubes, and I'm gonna animate them. Let's create a tube. Maybe I'll do something like this this time, and then yeah, it already tries to. Curve. No, no, that's not really a React way, but I'm 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 trying to create a fast a fast demo here. All right. Mm. Well, if you wait long enough, Copilot will try to help you. So what it does? I actually, wanted to. I just just wanted to some random curve, just so we could see it. And it's funny that because I made a loop uh, between 0 and 10, it actually knows that it should, uh, should, it should be minus 5 exactly, because this is the half of it. So it means that it, the curve will be centered on the y, actually, centered on the y. I'm actually going to do it like this, the other way around. But anyway, it's going to be centered on the x. And I should have some, some, some kind of curve in front of me. All right, then I can create curve. The curve is going to be, yeah, cat model room curve. And then in here, it's going to be mesh. And it's going to be tube geometry. And with the tube geometry, I could use uh, this curve already, which is nice. A lot of prac. And I don't know, I could basically use the same material in here. 
And let's let's use this U. Okay, we are missing something. Oh yeah, because we don't really have the three yet. Right. Yeah, now we have the curve. It's kind of too too damn big. Let's make it like this. Yeah, so we have this curve. Some kind of curve, right? Doesn't really matter at this point which one it is. So I can remove the um, can remove this. Uh, what I want to do next? I want to create a set of uh, a set of curves. So that curves, it's, it's going to be like a basic data. So it's going to be an array, and this is going to be array of the catmull rom curves. So uh, I'm going to do something like a hundred of curves. I'm going to make them from spherical. So there's the API. Spherical. Spherical. So you can set the uh, the vector, the the vector of three in 3GS from spherical cores, and you should use the radius, the p, and the theta. All right. So uh, what I want to do, I want to create a lot of those tubes. Mm. How do I do that? So first of all, uh, this is a loop for curves. Then I have to have another loop for the points inside every single curve. So this one's going to be what J. One was I. Okay, and actually, Copilot immediately tries to help me with that. Well, it's almost what I wanted, except in here, I'm going to use this set from spherical chords. It also set some from cylindrical cords. I didn't know about that actually. I only knew about the spherical. And in here, well, the radius, um, I don't know about one, it would be two. I also don't quite remember which one is theta and which one is t. But I'm going to try to trust Copilot in here. So this means. Uh, j between 0 and 100. So this is going to be between 0 and 2 pi's. Uh, the i is between... Uh, what's that k, by the way? I don't know where, where I missed it loop. Okay, and the i is actually between also 100. So both of those are going to be between uh, 0 and 2 pi's. But I'm not sure. One of them should be between 0 and math pi, just one pi. I don't remember which one. All right, so I have a loop. I push the point to my points array. Let's also format this off. So I push the points, then I'm creating a temporary curve, and those curves should be spread uniformly around the sphere, and then I'm creating the, uh, the curves. Okay, just so we are sure what exactly we are producing in there. So we have a 10,000 curves. That shouldn't be the case. It should be outside of this loop. Points is not defined. Okay, it should be in here. Never trust copilot. Okay. So now it works, and I have a hundred Catmull ROM curves, and I want to create a bunch of meshes from them. So this one will now accept uh, some kind of curve. And instead of calculating this curve in here, I'm just going to use the one from the props. And in here, well, isn't it astonishing that it kind of guessed what I, what I was trying to, to do? So it, it kind of grasped the, all the context. Okay? It's becoming just an advertisement for the copilot at this point. So is it right? I have to check it still because it, it, it's writing code faster than I can uh, consume it. It's, it seems right, but I'm not sure about the syntax and stuff. So yeah, I'm producing a lot of those tubes. 
based on the curves that I calculated uh, beforehand. Well, let, let's... Okay. And instead of using this, I'm gonna use the tubes. Yeah, I should have a key. Right. So it is kind of right, but not really. Maybe it's just too small of a radius. Yeah, kind of. So this is the loop for curves. This is the loop for points in each curve. Maybe I should just exchange those two values, because right now I'm getting horizontal curves. Now I could also make it random, uh, like... Yeah, basically this kind of function. And for each curve... I'm gonna have this length thing, and I'm gonna multiply this. Well, kind of getting there, it's just they're too thick for now. Yeah, getting there. And I also think that they're starting at the wrong side, of maybe like this. Maybe just minus. Uh, how do I switch? I have to learn math for that. <laughs> okay, so I, I ju just wanted to, for them to come from the bottom. I believe I have to flip one of the angles, but... Uh. So, if I multiply this one with a really small value, they all come in from the, like, basically top. Should it be like a math pi? It should be something like 1 minus uh, something. A lot of Argentina. This is crazy. So j is between 0 and this one going to be... Uh, okay, let's try this. God. Struggling with such a simple thing. I just want to flip them. So this value should be... Uh, So now it, it goes from the basically uh, zero to math pi, right? So let's say I add something small to this one. Yeah, they're starting there. So it's going to be like a math pi minus this. Yeah, basically just that. Ah, it's so easy yet so complicated sometimes. Thank you guys for being with me as well. All right, so... Um, have this length and I kind of maybe I should make them more spread around. So I have something. This is at least something. Uh, the next thing I'd like to do make some visuals. First of all, I'm gonna put the uh, the black background on the whole scene. And then um, what else? What else? What else? I want to create the shader material in here. So I'm gonna go to dry. Yeah, I could have scaled, but this is a cheat. <laughs> now we solve this math equation. It's going to be shader material. Let's take it. I have to include extent. All right, all right. So we actually have working, uh, we already have working tube. And in the tube, we'll have to switch the material. So this seems right. So in here, I kind of want to also want to, um, I would like to have the ref at some point, but not right now. So I'm going to copy this and extend this color material inside this tube. It's going to be brain material. At this point, kind of basic. Should be just red. And in here, brain material. And in here, brain, brain material from the lowercase. 
Let's also create a ref for this one. Uh, it's going to be brain met. Right, so we can refer to that one because we will need to update the time at least and maybe something else. There's also some kind of color in here already. Okay, I probably have some JavaScript error in there somewhere. Use ref is not defined, obviously. And then something else. Shell material is not defined. Yeah, of course, I need to include that one as well. Is anything else missing? Brain shift material is not defined because it's not shift. Just brain material. And uh, let's not shift again. Right, so now we have a shader material. I could also use uh, straight away the color that I put in the uniform. I don't know, it's some random color, but still, I can, I can at least see what color is that. Yeah. Right, so I also can move camera a little bit closer. Uh, how do you do this? Is it just camera? Position and some array, right? Zero, zero, and four. Yeah, it's too close. Which is still kind of good. Just the other effect. Okay, it should, should be a little further on. Right, not kind of full screen. All right, so far so good. So now we have to move into the actual shader animation and also need to create particles. Particles kind of a simple thing, but yeah. At this point, at this point, by the way, I actually could basically, by changing one line, I could switch it to a brain, right? Except uh, that I'm using the, uh, here I'm using the curve creation. Which is just an array of the cat Mulram curves, but in the data uh, that I'm, uh, I'm I'm getting in here, like the paths data, I only have the just the raw data, just the flat arrays. So how do we go about this? I guess first, uh, first I'm gonna create the um, the actual animation, maybe. Varying uh, lot the progress and progress of the animation. So mm, the first thing that you notice if you look into the into the what let's go into the blue yard is that uh, the brain is kind of oscillating and this is a really nice effect. Like it's it's kind of glowing. It, it, it almost makes you think that they're using the post processing, but they are not actually. There's no not a single post processing step in this uh, whole setup right now that you see. So this is what fascinated me. So all of these effects I actually created with one, just with one render pass. I mean, a couple of meshes, but still one render pass. Okay, and so what I wanted to create here, I wanted to create some oscillation. Oscillation. So I created the V progress, and I could cal calculate this V progress as something dependent on the on the UVs. So basically, because we are using the tube material, we should be getting the uh, the V U V X in here. So if I just put, um, I don't know, let's say our one equals. Just two random colors and then if we mix them with the VUVX uh, Y, so we're gonna get something like this. So right now the UVs are actually changing um, like around the, the uh, around those tubes, but I'd like to change that. First of all, I don't really need tubes, and neither do on the Blue Yard the Unseen Studio use tubes. So we can basically use uh, just the line, line material. It looks kind of weird because it is, uh, I don't know, maybe we could use three at least. Yeah. We also could use instead of VUV, 
Wii U V Y, we could use Wii U V X, and with this we should get uh, uh, the slight gradient. An actual funny thing, th this gradient is coming from the top to the bottom right now, so it's it's reddish at the bottom, but it's getting yellow on the on the other end of those. Let's also make it. Uh, I don't know. That should be a direct API, right? Take some kind of prop to make it. Uh, double side material right and then i want to create an oscillation of the color in there so how do i do that um i think the way to create this is basically just the sine curve sine curve it's just a little trick so in here yeah and this is going to be a sine curve between between what and what? Well, probably this should be the function from the VUVY multiplied by something plus time. Multiply it with what? I don't know. Because if I, if I don't multiply it with anything, this basically means that the radians are coming from 0 to 1. But if I multiply it with uh, some, I don't know, 8, for example, it should make sense. And I should be able to uh, now change between those two colors with the V progress. It doesn't really didn't really change anything for some reason. Sine V V Y should it be X, right? I already forgot which one it is. But I, anyway, I should I should also use the time. So I'm gonna use frame and in here i'm gonna set the uniform to the clock elapsed time and i also need to import use frame okay something is wrong i'm undeclared identifier and yeah it is uniform lot time Okay, now something is happening, but it's not yet cool. So it's definitely the other way, the other way around. Yes, yeah, so now we get some kind of weird oscillation. It doesn't look particularly nice with maybe uh, this one, but let me let me see. The other nice trick that the guys used on this website is actually a smooth step in this one. I mean, this sign is already between minus one and one. So when you smooth step this one, you basically don't uh, get uh, to the to the other values. You just uh, kind of what do you you ease the curve of the sign basically with this smooth step. But it means that the uh, what is it the flicking, the blooming, the flashing of this thing is just a little bit more I don't know natural something like that. I mean, see, it's it's not uh, it's not linear anymore. So it's a smooth step, and smooth step is a what is it? Power of three, right? I forgot. Let's check that because this is an educational stream. We have to know what is exactly the function. I think it's power of three, right? Yeah. So the smooth step with the power of three curve. I hope you saw that. Yeah, this is the book of shaders. All right, all right. So I think it's time that we actually use the brain here. <laughs> it's too late, half an hour into the stream, but we're going to use the brain now. Finally. And first of all, I need to create some curves out of this brain, and let's do that. Mm, let's do this. Hello to Kenya. The browser name is the Arc Browser. I, I think it, it, it's no more the invitation only. You can just download this one now. So I, I should prepare the paths. So uh, I'm going to create that curves, brain curves. And then uh, path for each path. I'm going to have a loop in here between uh,
and in here not plus but equals three because there are three coordinates for each vertex and then points and then in here i'm going to push all those three points to the curve and then in here i'm going to do the uh, yeah and then i'm going to push to the brain curves so with this i should create the uh, catmull rom curves out of my brain data brain curves let's see yeah i have 56 uh, catmull rom curves now perfect and then I could basically switch this variable in here. Where? Where do I use them? Here. And well, it's starting to look good. Maybe a little smaller. And maybe I should move the camera a little closer. So we're getting some kind of brain material in here. And what else, what else? I need to update this material. So I want to set the opacity uh, just to transparent, true. Depth tests, I don't need it. Both the depth right, false. Landing. Yeah get in there right you could see already some some gradients happening in here you could see how the the colors are slightly slightly changing between one another we're gonna get better about this soon i think also right now we're using the three here basically we could use two and by that i mean uh, that there's actually like you could see we are basically using the ribbons. It, it's not even the tubes. We could use the tubes here, by the way. I'm not sure. But um, mm, the main reason, I think, uh, in the original animation, the tubes are used. Let's also make this one really small. Okay. Is it just not... Oh, am I using the right API? Okay. I think I'm using the right API. So the reason they are using uh, the, the ribbons here, because if you look closer, there are a couple of uh, curves coming from the same direction. And because all of those curves are coming with a different progress at that point, you get this nice uh, oscillation gradient, because one curve is at the one uh, progress value and the other one it's the other progress value, and you get different colors in there. And you get this nice oscillating feel to, to all of it because at the same moment there are different parts that are oscillating and it is also non-linear because we're using smooth step so this is uh, why I, I could also all the curves and brain curves Did the same thing right right so so i could use the data like you know, for the props not really hard coding it because i will need those brain curves right now again and there's just a couple of small steps to finish this off to finish the brain part because we need the particles as well mm. uh, what do i do about this so i have the uh, this part I could also like we have the hard edges here and i think we also need a different color in here so i'm gonna use uh, the different color it doesn't really matter which color i'm using here oh, i could use the other color uh, like in here right i don't know uh, what was this color and i need something bluish that's so gonna be something uh, this 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 let's see what's this color is gonna be yeah it is something bluish and then i i remember as i remember there was a little a little trick uh to trigger uh like uh, to use the single color and in, in get this oscillation because basically we already have the v progress value and if i put it in here you're gonna see it oscillating between black and white right now slowly moving the oscillation between 
but already kind of cool animation even the, in the wireframe look right i mean it's kind of nice that they are disappearing but not yet not yet so um final color is going to be equal the mix between the color and the color multiplied with something some small value so basically it makes the color darker and then progress and then i put the color in here i guess i made a mistake somewhere okay i have two final colors now right get in there right mm -hmm. i think the time could run faster in here as well maybe not as as fast Pretty cool, right? Mm, I could also... Mm, what else? What else? What else? Uh, I will remove the wireframe look now. There's also one small trick because you could see the edges of all of those curves right now. And I could hide them actually. Because I already have an opacity and transparency on my material, I could uh, do something like this. Hide corners. And this is going to be the smooth... Well... It's not quite what I expected. It, sh it should be two smooth steps multiplied. But one should be like between 0 and 0 0.1. And the other one should be between like 0, 0.9 and 1. Eight corners. And I'm going to multiply this one in here. This is the other corners. I think I should use the Y. Oh, no, 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 not the Y. Also, also actually quite a nice look in here something is off yeah, let's first make uh, one it's i think it's definitely x because i'm using x in here mm. i'm basically trying to cut uh, the edges of the curves so it's going to be 1 and 0 0.9, for example. Yeah, I think I've hidden them. And then the other one is going to be from the other side, right? It should be 0 and then like 0 0.1. Yeah, right. You see, you don't. Well, you don't see because you can't see the edges right now. I'm just just gonna show you the difference in here. So if I remove those height corners, you're gonna see the rough edges of the of each of those uh, ribbons. But if I just hide them slightly with the with the opacity with the smooth steps, you get the really nice smooth shape. Right? Pretty cool. So such a small, simple, basic trick. But it does add a lot to this like animation and the geometry is simple, but adding small tricks on top of it makes it really cool. Okay, so I think I'm pretty much done with the brain shape. Let's go to the particles. Uh, of course, you it would be perfect to import all of those modules into the uh, yeah from the separate files. Maybe let's. Let's do that. We have like 15, 20 minutes uh, to the stream. Should be good. So I only need, uh, I only actually need tubes in here. So I'm going to copy paste uh, this thing. Path spring material tube. Right. This is the one I need. Then I'm going to create uh, brain uh, tubes uh, js and then i'm gonna import this one i'm gonna need a lot of dependencies so i'm gonna mm, i'm gonna just copy paste all of them there are probably some that i don't need but just for it to work and then i'm gonna import i have to export it first so i have a tube tubes export default not the default just the export function tubes then i'm gonna get the tubes i'm gonna import Oops, from no, it can't get the brain. Oops, so fingers crossed, it 
didn't actually work because why I forgot some some bracket or something. I definitely forgot to close some 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 brackets here. Function tubes. The content can take some valid just syntax. It's in the mesh. This seems right to me. Seven line seventy two. So in here some mistake. Why is this? Um, why why is there a JavaScript error in here? See, maybe I don't need this or what? Stack. What's wrong with the mesh? Mm. Oh yeah, J six, right? Uh, I think this is the the thing, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Whew. Thanks for the save. All right. I'm still. Yeah. As I mentioned already, I still do those stupid things. It's kind of non-obvious to me. Oh, JavaScript, anyway. Okay. Particles. Particles. So now we uh, use the tubes in here. So I'm gonna use the brain particles. Function. Brain particles. And those brain particles kind of will also use uh, the uh, all the curves. Okay, can I call them the same name at least? And then I'm gonna put the brain particles in here, just right after the tube. Yeah, uh, I also need the, the prop on the curve and then it's actually all the curves. Ah. Okay. And then in here I should return something. And in this case, it will be. Uh, it will be just the particles. And I want to create some first some random particles and then put them. The link is in the, in the chat. I'm recreating the blue yard economics. Uh, animation right now i, I, I want to mm, run particles through those veins uh, with the react 3 fiber and how do i do this okay so basically i need the points in here i also need the buffer geometry okay let's try to go with the uh, with the copilot flow right what else geometry and then some points material and for the points material i also want to kind of want to use the shader material again and as i already have it here i'm gonna copy paste uh, this one so inside the brain particles i'm gonna create uh, this i don't need all of all of it i don't need all of it i just need let's make them red i don't know let's make it four and then we have the position in here we have the uvs so this should be enough of a shade of brain particle material And in here, brain particle material. Ouch. Yeah, so this uh, should be enough. But then I also need to calculate position. So, so far, I'm just trying to spread random particles on the screen. And then I'm going to uh, make them move according to the plan. So uh, how do I calculate their positions? First of all, maybe mm, I should create some kind of... Um, attribute to use right so it's going to be attribute positions it's going to be positions length divided by three so i'm going to put a, a lot of uh, 
values into the positions array it's going to be a flat array and this is going to be a, mm, the correct way of doing this so i guess it's just going to be the positions so i'm going to create it a float 32 array straight away and it's going to have three values per each vertex rain particle material did i make it capital in there uh where was it yeah 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 thank you getting doing that all right still some javascript errors but that's because the i don't have positions defined right so now i have to calculate some random positions um uh, that positions equals uh, use mem i believe the way to create those positions so copilot help me and uh, copilot tries to help me so i need just the float area of those positions and basically let's make it like this mm. do i have the random range function still in here yeah do So for I'm gonna have a hundred points, which is the random locations. This will create me uh, the positions array, which I can later use inside my buffer geometry as an attribute and with some material. So maybe I should be able to at least see something. Not yet. Position is not defined. Position because uh, I, I think I called it positions, right? Have to be positions. Why do I call it position actually? Line 50 positions. So I don't yet see uh, any particles for some reason. And um, why is that? So this is the brain tubes. I don't really need it. This is the um, brain particle material, which is uh, just the usual material. Mm. Missed something. Uh, so I have the position attribute. Brain particle material should be there. Maybe it's there to spread around and they're too small or something. So let's uh, make them bigger. No, I don't yet see them. Are they in the scene? They are in the scene. Rain particles. With the buffer attribute position. Mm. Something simple I'm struggling on here. Just small step away. Hello from the Netherlands. Mm. Is it the old syntax? Could it be the old syntax? Yeah, I think it's it, they, they've changed it, right? And Copilot's still using one. I think it's uh, just attach like this. Mm. Now what else wrong? Reading position. The position is wrong. Attributes. Is it the attributes? Oh, you're yeah, right. Uh, for fuck's sake. Okay. That used to be the old syntax, the one that Copilot helped me to achieve here, but then the syntax changed. So this is more reason not to change the API with the modules because Copilot remembers the old stuff. It even remembers it much better than the new stuff. All right. All right. Struggle goes on. Now we have those uh, like really small particles. I also don't really need um, you know, like the depth stuff, depth test stuff on them. I'm gonna really fast make them circular. Right. 
Uh, landing. Yeah. It's not that kind of uh, transparent. They're still way too big. You ask me. Maybe just one. Why are they not getting smaller though? Why are they so big right now? Just doesn't seem to matter the size of of of, of FGL point size. Why did I fuck up this time? Yeah, but if they update the training, they still need to find out like which one is the correct one. All right. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I was I was going to create uh, like um, like two st equals gl court. Let's put this one in here. And why they are not red anymore? Also, kind of wondering. Uh, Something seems wrong. Ah, bleeding. Yes, I, I, I am bleeding a lot. Oh. Yeah, but but it still didn't fix. Why are they are uh, why are they are not right? Maybe because of the blending. Yeah. No. Why why is not my material working right now? For some reason, it's a brain particle material, and this is the one that I'm using. Brain particle material seems correct. Yeah, yeah, this is the formula for the perspective, but it should it should be working without this as well. Yeah, maybe we could we could have this one as well. Yeah, but I mean, uh, I, not, neither the color is working for me at the at the moment for some reason. Why is that? Oh, it's not here. It's actually here. But uh, why is 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 the is it not working? You can have it for later on. Um, okay, it's because I nested it inside the buffer geometry. Ah, so much for declarative stuff. Right. Now they are too small, obviously. Let's make them bigger. Yeah, now there's a shader error because uh, there was a what? It's I don't really have MV position yet. Yeah, that's why. All right. Where are my particles? Show me my particles finally. See. Ah, they were there. They just were there. Some dumb errors here. So it's a brain particle material. Maybe that's just for a second. I'm gonna comment all of it. Hmm. Brain particle material inside my points. There's a buffer geometry. Ah. Okay. Let's just calm down. This is something, something simple. Let's command this as well. I just had them. I just had them. Am I getting another like shader? Okay, I do. Because I don't. I haven't stated the. Uh, yeah. Which one is that? By the way, I think it's four dimensional, right? The thing that you get there. Right. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, almost there, guys. Bear with me a little bit. And then there's an ST, which is kind of a UV. And then and this is 0.5. Center it. Length. These errors I can handle now, and then uh, the plot the opacity equals. Let's 
call this one more sense. Right. Right, right, right. Okay, we have the particles. Then mm, concerning the color, let's bring back all, all the stuff that I And then the opacity as well. Let's multiply it with something. So they're not like... All right, all right, all right. Now <laughs> the final thing. So I, I want to move those particles across the curves. So I have the curves in here. Uh, let's uh, just check myself. All the curves. Brain particles yeah i have all the curves and those are catamaran curves so right now i'm gonna create uh, the basis for my particles and then i'm gonna update my attribute right so the positions for now is the mm, It's just the static random values across my screen. What I want to do, I want to change them and move particles uh, on all of those curves. So to do this, I'm going to create uh, the array of those particles first, which is going to be what? Which is going to be uh, in terms of React. I mean, this should be where it's like use effect or something, like something that you create on the start, right? It, not maybe use memo, but probably use effect right so I'm, I'm gonna also create the my points yeah const my points equals use use ref it's gonna be an array and then i'm gonna have use effect do i actually have the use effect in here probably not And inside use effect, I need to create all of those points. And uh, let's kind of fixate the number of points. Uh, let's density equals 10. Number of points equals 10 multiplied by uh, like density and multiplied by all the curves. Land. That means I'm going to have 10 points for each curve in my brain for each bean or what's that and then for each of those points uh, like for this number of points i'll need to create some kind of array populate it it's going to be the number of points and in here i'm going to push it to my points array current push so each point has to have uh, uh, the current position probably should it have no it's the uh, current offset which is going to be math random each point will also have the speed which is going to be something really small each point should also have uh, the curve corresponding to each point and with that i'm just going to get the all the curves uh, I? So maybe I should have two loops here. First among the curves and the other one uh, for the density. And the other one for the density. Like this. And in here is going to be all the curves I for each point. Everything else should be uh, should be pretty much random. So the current offset. This is it. I just need to uh, I just need to offset each point and move them across the curve. So with this, I'm gonna get the points, and then in the use frame, finally doing the the animation. I want to update uh, my points positions. According to the um, according to the time, right? Because I have the clock elapsed time in here, 
And for each of those points, for each of those points, and by the way, this number 100 should be actually number of points now. So we have the attribute of the proper length in here. And poo -poo -poo, the final uh, doing of all of this, I should uh, get uh, the... Uh, how do I get it? I should I should also put a ref in my geometry, right? Uh, I have the buffer geometry. Ref. Rain gel. So maybe it is possible with the GPU as well, but when you have like hundreds or hundreds of points, it's actually much easier to to create it with just the CPU animation. So we have the brain gel. It's gonna be this. And this means I could get the current positions by just be getting this brain gear current attributes position array. And this on the other turn means that I could now iterate for my points current length. Yeah, right. In the end, I shouldn't forget that I need to uh, do the brain. All of this. Needs update to true because this attribute should be updating. And now uh, the actual animation, right? Like for now, it should be just uh, should be just working, right? No JavaScript errors. Nothing. Nothing is running here. Everything running properly. It should be running. So in here, I'm gonna update in those car positions with some um, some values. So which value? Uh, it should have current position here. zero let's say zero and this means that uh, i'm here i'm gonna do my points current position i'm gonna add the speed on each frame i'm gonna add the speed to each particle this value i'm gonna normalize this value so um, it doesn't go over one so it's always between zero and one just looping between zero and one and then i can calculate knowing uh, the curve because i have the curve yeah, basically this. Thank you, Copilot. So basically, I'm taking the curve and taking the point with the progress between 0 and 1 on that curve, which is current position that I just calculated. And the, these are gonna, going to be three values. So this means that... Uh, yeah, basically this. Thank you, Copilot. It could almost write the whole stream for me. So I'm updating the current positions. And then I need to, in the end, I need to update. Uh, yeah, I don't need to. I'm already writing to the geometry here. So I'm updating it here. Let's see what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. This is what I'm talking about. So now I should obviously make them smaller. Uh, let's make them, let's put them into perspective. This kind of the size, maybe even smaller. But you could also notice that they're all starting at the zero point, and this is because uh, when I initiated the particles, I put zero here, so I could do it randomly. I think I want them bigger in the end. Yeah, you obviously want them with, with the random sizes as well. And to do this, uh, I'm gonna do another use memo. Random. No, I think it's going to call this one randoms, randoms, randoms. Three, one. And then you could also see that uh, the particles are following some of the like black parts of the mm, of the ribbons because we are uh, hiding them to hide the rough edges. And I think the speeds are too too big. So let me fix that in the speed and the scale. So I'm going to have the randoms here, randoms. I can add another attribute in here. Declaratively, another attribute. Random. It's 
going to be size 1. I also need to declare it. Uh, randoms. I mean, plot. Randoms. Okay, something is wrong. So, randoms should be what attribute? It's almost if, if the attribute is 0. So the attribute, oh, the attribute is actually called random, not randoms. No, that wasn't it. But it is called random. Well, maybe let's call everything randoms then. It's not divided by three. Yeah, yeah, now it's working properly. Just had to fix the dimensions. Now the particles are of a different size, yeah. We could also make it dependent on their size, like the bigger, the slower, but it's, I think it's, it's already too much. But uh, what, else, what else I wanted to do here? This is basically it. Maybe just, just one small thing, yeah. One small thing, I'm going to edit and we're going to finish uh, on that note. So I kind of want to create uh, the distortion to do on the mesh. Yeah, it's, it will be kind of a long stream, but, but a cool one. So in here, when I have the progress, let's also have the uniform, like three mouse. Now I also want to create, have the, uh, let the viewport, uh, how do you call it, use viewport or something? Mm. F3F, uh, viewport, use how do we get the viewport from here? Okay, we have the use three. Like this. And I'm just trying to get the mouse positions on the screen. Well, this is basically it, right? Pilot will try to help me, which is not correct at all. So I'm going to fix it. I'm going to put the mouse X, multiply this, and then the mouse Y, multiply it with this. So this should give me uh, the mouse position inside my mesh. It's basically the same as ray casting uh, on the plane. Okay, something is still wrong. What else? Right, fiber from does the file exist? What do you what do you even mean? It's not uh, it's not it's like this. Uh, still something is wrong. declare the uniform obviously in here somewhere so who seems fine and then the final final touch so inside the vertex shader i'm going to copy Max this equals, I don't know, something small. Mm. And then if this is less than the uh, like three deer equals uh, normalize mouse direction towards the current position. Mouse minus P. Should it be like this? Yeah, and then I should add something like this to my... Uh... I should multiply this one by length, probably, and this is the length. By something that goes to zero, so uh, it's going to be the basically dist divided by the max dist, right? But should I subtract here? Because, uh, yeah, 
it should be this way. So I'm 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 trying to localize the mouse to some small radius, which is the max dist for me here, and then I'm trying to add some distortion to to that. And yeah, basically this should it. Didn't do anything for me yet. But it should okay because I'm not outputting actually even P. I'm outputting position for now. <laughs> well, th this is actually a cool effect. This is not what I was intending to do because I believe uh, the strength of the effect is too big because this is normalized vector and uh, I have to maybe multiply it with something small. Still way too big. Yeah, and what else? What else? What else? What else am I missing here? It's still is it still still it's just too big for me. No, it doesn't seem to care at all. Maybe it's too small now. Maybe this one is too big. So this is the max dist, and this is a dir mm. Just have to figure out the correct numbers in here. Well, this is a nice effect on itself because this is the vertex shader effect, not really. A, or maybe it should be actually quite big in here. This is funny. This is actually kind of funny. Not was a, not was I wasn't intending to do. But actually kind of cool. Should be pretty small in here. I'm just missing something something small in here. Mm. Okay, actually I'd rather multiply it in here, right? In the end. Why is it such a big uh, distortion in here? So if the distance between the mouse... Uh, why is it wee wee why at all? Uh, I mean, it's, uh, it doesn't make any sense, of course. This is what Copilot told me to do, right? Again. Yeah, yeah, we're getting there now. I just have to get the... It, it was distorting something weird, but it was nice, kind of nice, right? You can agree that it was nice. So now we got the distortion here. Yeah, it was kind of easy. So it's a basic thing. We are just uh, let's increase uh, the, the radius just so we see. It. It's really pretty cool. <laughs> like a parallax effect or something. Oh, I was just complete wrong. This should be the same the same vector in here. And I was using VUV, which is which doesn't make any sense because it is different for every curve on the brain so it obviously it broke so what, what, what i think it did which was kind of a cool effect because we have tubes and i used vuvy it means half of the tubes were being distorted and this is why i had this weird effect uh, bring it back because i actually i actually liked it because this is the distance between mouse x y and buv which is well it doesn't make any sense but it was pretty cool because it was uh yeah. I mean, and I, yeah, it was doing this. And this is a geometrical animation, I mind you. So it's not a fragment shader or post processing step. This is just unwrapping the tubes into the like world space, which is just kind of a crazy thing. But it looks, it looks kind of cool, right? And this is especially cool. This is a vertex animation because you could always. Put a gradient on those uh, like stretched geometrical things, but uh, no, let's make it right, okay. But it's just sometimes it's actually a nice effect that you achieve uh, during the development. Let's make it big. No, let's not make it big. All right. So this is it. We recreated this thing with the React Free Fiber, some shaders, and I don't know, with your help as well. Thank you for. 
helping me with those small struggles with the React. I hope you like this one. And I hope you had some fun along the way with me as well. And it's a pretty cool animation. And all the credits, again, of course, goes to the studio that developed it, the Unseen Studio. And those guys are just rocking. They did a lot of really cool websites. And I think this is not the first, not even the second uh, time that I'm uh, uh, like giving credits to them. And I mean, uh, paying a tribute to their websites because they're doing a pretty good job with their animations. Oops. Yeah. So, yeah, this is it. And of course, uh, any of your uh, experiments are welcome uh, with those things. I would try to use uh, some different um, curves. And by the way, let, let's for a second, for a slight second, also see how this works with the different curves. Because uh, I have this, uh, these other curves, right? I have the brain curves and I have the curves. And now I could just switch and see how this animation works on something else. Well, the sizing is, is this something I have to work on, on here. Make it really small as well. Uh, I use the spherical. Oh, it's here, it's hidden. Actually, looking pretty cool, even even with, even with this setup, right? And we just did that by replacing curves, basically. It's a pretty cool thing to have curves and animate some stuff along the way, and I think it's also pretty performant in this moment. Let's check this last thing, and yeah, it's basically nothing, just two millisecond, even while I'm streaming and doing all this stuff. How could you collect the properties of the Blender file? You do the GLTF JSX module and you get them. You do the GLTF JSX, which is an amazing module by the Poimandras again. Just run it and you're gonna get the output with the JSX uh, file. Thank you guys. <laughs> Thank you guys for unflattered. Um, yeah, I don't know. You can propose any websites that you like, and I might do the stream about them. So for this one, I have to finish it because it's it's way past my deadline, like one hour deadline. But I hope you're gonna like it. Some fluid sync, yeah, possibly some simple fluid sync could be doable within one hour. Well, thank you for being with me again. Uh, this support means a lot for me. It gives me a lot of energy. And if you put the comments or like button, it obviously helps with the views because I'm doing this for free, for fun, and for you. And I'm going to wish you a great week, great day, and say some kind words to the people that you love. Stay safe and love Ukraine. See you guys in a while.